Hi, everyone. My name is Erica Corbell, and this is my presentation on atherosclerotic relations and analysis of the uterine, carotid, and left anterior descending arteries, a cadaveric study. So what is atherosclerosis? Atherosclerosis describes the pathological process of artery lumen narrowing due to the buildup of plaque within the vessel wall. First, excess cholesterol is deposited within the arterial wall. The cholesterol plaque grows and continues to damage the arterial wall. Eventually, the plaque causes narrowing of the vessel and reduces blood flow to that specific region of the body. Common vessels affected include the carotid, coronary arteries, and abdominal and thoracic aortic arteries, seen here in this figure. However, the process of atherosclerosis has the capability to affect all vascular networks, including uterine arteries and females. Atherosclerosis can lead to cardiovascular disease. This disease is an umbrella term that describes diseases affecting the heart and vasculature of the whole body. Specifically, we will be discussing CVD, which causes coronary heart disease and cerebrovascular disease. CVD is a global health phenomenon 32% of global deaths in 2019 were due to CVD, and 85% of the 32 were due to heart attack and stroke. Within the United States, cardiovascular disease has also significantly affected women. Heart disease has been the number one cause of death since 1921. In 2021 alone, there were over 310,000 deaths among all U.S. women. It was the leading cause of death amongst white and black non-Hispanic females in the same year. Additionally, stroke has been the third leading cause of death since 1938, except in the years of 2020 and 2021 due to COVID-19. In 2021, the stroke was the fourth leading cause of death in white, black, Hispanic, and Asian females in the U.S. Luckily, total cardiovascular disease has been decreasing since the 1950s. This is due to the decline of smoking, as well as other lifestyle and dietary changes. Additionally, enhancements in medicine have improved diagnosing and management of CVD. Now, the CVD, now ASCVD, or Arthrosclerosis Cardiovascular Disease Risk calculator, calculator, is frequently used for adults between ages of 40 and 75 years old who have cardiovascular risk factors, including dyslipidemia, diabetes, hypertension, or smoking. If this screening determines an elevated risk for CVD, Effective medications are now prescribed for further disease progression. However, all, however, there are still over 6.4 million disease, disease people um, from around the world that prematurely die from CBD. This validate, validates the need for continued research to find earlier ways to predict or diagnose CBD. All four studies here listed uh, demonstrate the associations between cardiovascular disease and the uterus or uterine arteries. Crawford et al. found an increased uterine artery atherosclerosis and more complex lesions in those with hypertension, ECG abnormalities, postmenopausal status, and greater age. Although the study was conducted in the US, unlike the following studies, most patients were of premenopausal status. The next study, found coronary heart disease in over 87% of women with uterine arcuate artery calcifications found on transvaginal ultrasound. Additionally, Achille et al. found a 15.4 times increased risk of atherosclerotic CVD in those with uterine myometrial calcifications, showing diffuse or thick granular calcifications. Lastly, Raimondo et al. found uterine artery arteriosclerosis in 70% of women who underwent hysterectomy due to benign uterine diseases. Interestingly, these women also had a significantly elevated BMI and triglyceride levels, along with significantly lower measures of HDL or high-density lipoproteins. These four previous studies demonstrate how the uterus and uterine arteries can paint a better picture of possible CVD in living women throughout the world. While only one study was conducted in the U.S., all studies were conducted on living women. The association between uterine artery atherosclerosis and CVD can be further validated with a postmortem study not yet seen in literature. This current study seeks to determine if there is a relationship between uterine artery atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease, and carotid stenosis as evaluated at one point in time. Specifically, this one point in time in death is theoretically the best measure of atherosclerosis since the vessels have had a lifetime to develop atherosclerosis.
So how do we develop this project? We took 25 uterine arteries, 25 common carotid arteries, and 12 left anterior descending arteries from 13 formalin-involved cadavers that were dissected, harvested, and examined for atherosclerotic changes within the vessels. Unilateral, unilateral analysis was done on two donors and one LAD that was not evaluated due to the presence of a stent placement. We excluded those with prior hysterectomy, a pacemaker, or compromised arteries due to the embalming process. <clears throat> After harvesting approximately one centimeter of each vessel, a board-certified pathologist analyzed the lumen cross-sections and determined the gross degree of stenosis. These samples were then sent to University of Missouri One Health Biorepository for h &E staining. Upon return, the lumen samples were microscopically analyzed by the same pathologist who determined the lumen size and degree of stenosis. The presence of calcifications within the plaque was noted to characterize the progression of atherosclerosis within the vessel. <clears throat> numeric and statistical, excuse me, numeric and statistical results were analyzed. We performed two two-tailed t-tests comparing the degree of stenosis between left and right-sided arteries, as well as between artery types. So to demonstrate where we specifically harvested the arterial samples, I've included these images. So first we took the uterine artery, and as you can see here, it comes directly off of the internal iliac artery. The uterine artery will then go and supply the uterus itself. It'll give an ascending branch of the uterine artery, as noted in a previous study. However, this artery is Im embedded within the myometrium of the uterus. Therefore, we took about a centimeter of our artery just between the external uterine artery and the myometrium of the uterus, so just about here. For the left anterior descending artery, we took a, a portion of the artery between the left coronary artery and the first septal branch, which would be right about here. We decided to use a left anterior descending artery because many studies have shown that the LAD is most common site for STEMI, non-STEMI, and acute coronary syndromes. We then took the carotid, uh, common carotid artery at the bifurcation point of the internal and external carotid. Again, we took the bifurcation point because literature shows that atherosclerosis more commonly develops at the bifurcation point due to the turbulence of blood flow. So our results. So as you can see here, we took both the gross and the microscopic evaluation of the atherosclerosis of each vessel we investigated. So on the left, you can see the gross specimen, and on the right, you can see the microscopic specimen. Figure one illustrates 40% occlusion of the right carotid artery at the bifurcation point. So you can see the arrow here pointing to the 40% degree of stenosis. And within the microscopic elements, you can see these little purple patches. The purple patches resemble or they are the calcium deposits within this artery itself. Figure two represents 60% occlusion of the right carotid artery at the bifurcation point. So this figure two is higher uh, occlusion than figure one. As indicated here, you can see the thickness of the intima of the vessel we are analyzing, and you can see the cholesterol clefts building up along the inside of the lumen. However, you do not see the purple patches as you do in figure one. Therefore, although figure two has a higher degree of occlusion, it does not have any calcium plaques within this vessel. Figure three illustrates the right uterine artery, as you can see here on the gross, and then here on the microscopic. Microscopic, this right here is the uterine artery itself, and then the purple patch all around the uterine artery is the calcium deposits. So once we evaluated both gross and microscopic elements of all vessels, we then took the numeric data as shown here. So we can first see that this chart, table one, is the degree of stenosis observed microscopically. From this, we determined the greatest degree of stenosis was in the carotid arteries listed with the greatest means in both the left and the right. Plaque calcifications were also more frequently identified in the carotid arteries and uterine arteries, particularly on the right side, thus showing the 50% and 45% relatively to the common carotid and uterine artery. Table two illustrates the statistical analysis between left and right sided um, degrees of arterial stenosis. And you can see that in the common, common carotid and in the uterine, when compared on the left and right sides, there was an insignificant factor between the left and right sides. Again, in table three, this also shows arterial degree of stenosis between artery types. 
this degree showed no statistical significance um, between the two arteries evaluated, the uterine versus carotid artery and the uterine versus the LAD. So what does this mean? So these illustrates uh, these findings illustrate prevalence of atherosclerosis within all three analyzed vessels, which is what we were looking for. However, there are insignificant differences between the stenosis degree in the left and right-sided arteries, and this indicates there are similar blood flow and turbulence patterns within bilateral vessels. There's also insignificant differences between arterial type and stenosis degree, indicating atherosclerosis affects all the vessels cohesively. We wouldn't expect there to be a massive degree of stenosis within the LAD, and there'd be completely open and patent blood flow within the uterine and the carotid arteries, just as you wouldn't expect the uterine artery to be completely stenosed and the LAD completely, completely open. Each patient would have a relative degree of similarity between the vessels that are affected. So clinically, we can determine that during hysterectomy, we can use microscopic evaluation of uterine arteries for atherosclerosis, and that can be a predictive factor for a patient's risk of developing other atherosclerotic diseases, such as coronary artery disease and carotid stenosis. We did have some limitations in this study. The one limitation is a limited sample size of only 13 donors. Because we had a limited sample size, we were unable to do complete correlation to statistics. Additionally, we only evaluated the arteries present, urine, uterine, LAD, and the common carotid at the bifurcation point. Therefore, other blockages in other coronary vessels or uterine vessels were not investigated in this study. Additionally, there was limited past medical and social history available from the donors we were able to use. So future directions, we continued this project through this year's the 2024 and 2025 cohorts of donors at KCU, and currently data analysis is taking place. Additionally, we can investigate further the different arteries that are possible for cardiovascular disease. Additionally, we can look at BMI to determine the associations um, of BMI with the degree of arterial stenosis. I would like to especially thank the cohort of 2023, 2024, and the 2024, 2025 Kansas City University Gift Body Program for the donors that were able to help me with this project. I'd also like to thank my PI, Dr. Hannah Hamden, for all of her help on this project. Additionally, I would like to thank the team lead from the last year's cohort, Michaela Swanka Allard, for all of her help and all of the fellows who were able to help with data collection. Here are my references. Thank you so much for listening.